Hey, Stereo Azimuth here, and this is video number two on the Hollow Audio Red. And I wanted to go over the software, like how you actually control it. On the last video, I said I was going to do a video on the Red OS and Gen 2 Player and Doretta. And then I realized that Gen 2 Player and Doretta are not actually like exclusive to the Hollow Audio Red. So I'm going to be doing that on a separate video. So. Yeah, sorry about that. But what, what I am going to cover in this video, the Red OS, how you operate it, because I realized like it doesn't really have, there's no real, there, the only like button on it is the on off button, right? So like, how do you control it with the streaming and how do you actually do it with the included stuff? Now, yes, they have a website, they have a manual, you can follow the manual, but hopefully this will be a quick start guide to show you and give you a little bit of an insight as to what like uh, you would be working with if you got the hollow audio red or maybe you already have one and you're trying to get it to work. The other thing I want to do is answer a couple questions about it because Pi streaming devices are still new. A lot of people are still trying to, you know, find out about them, wrap their heads around them. Like, what is it? What is this thing? What, what, what's going on here? And so I, I can't answer all those questions. Um, but I can say it is a streamer device that, you know, you plug in with your Ethernet to your network and then it will give you all the digital outputs in a very clean manner, a very clean digital stream from services like QoBuzz or Tidal or Rune or like whatever. And I mean, QoBuzz, you have to connect through uh, Rune or some other service uh UPnP, airplay that kind of stuff it does not have uh bluetooth on it there's no way to add uh, bluetooth to the red but all those other network services are available we'll go through all of those but i kind of just wanted to clear all that up and um to answer those questions yes you can still use it as a usb output like i said before in the first video the usb if you have a computer hooked up then you know then it uses that usb connection uh if there's no usb connected then it will use the cm4 the the pi module to give you all the you know the the to, to boot the red os and then also give you all the other digital outputs the spdiff the aes the i2s all that kind of stuff i also wanted to answer another question about the usb output and how to configure the usb output because the USB output is not simultaneous. Um, I guess it can be simultaneous, but it has to be configured in the red OS. And we will go over that as well. So the first thing that we want to do is like, if I have a, um, red OS, if I have it plugged up, plugged out with, you know, ethernet, because there is no Wi-Fi, it's on my network. So how do I interact with it? How do I do anything with it? Well, once it's booted up, once you've given it a minute to kind of, you know, find an IP on your network and things like that, there are two ways to connect to it. You can either go to the direct IP address. If you actually like know how to find that direct IP address, you know, to go into your router or to use some sort of, you know, IP shark to like find the, the IP address or really the easy way is what I'll show you. And I'm going to switch to my, uh, switch to my browser here. And all you're going to do is go to HTTP colon now, not HTTPS, and then it's slash slash red slash config dot PHP. Okay. I've already connected to it. So Chrome already knows where I'm going and it will find the red that is on your network. Okay. And you get the logo here, the hollow audio red. And I think if you connect to that is the same thing. It just goes back to the, the home screen. You also have this compatibility mode and performance mode and the compatibility mode. What that does is like all the services that you can connect to, whether it be HQ player, UPnP, airplay, squeeze light, scream, Spotify, Rune, and Tidal, like you could enable, you know, what you want to use. Okay. And they will all be ready. Meaning if I'm, you know, if I uh, connect all of these and turn them all on, 
which I haven't turned them all on until I go to the bottom of the screen and hit save. But if I turn them all on, I can listen to Rune. And then once I'm done with Rune, then I want to go to, like, say I want to play something on my phone and go to AirPlay. Then AirPlay is available and it's always there. In uh, the performance mode, you have to go back into the OS if I had the same situation and I want to, you know, I'm done with Rune and I want to play something on AirPlay, I would have to go back into the, the, the Red OS, go back to that website, and then I would have to, like, enable the AirPlay. It's going to disable, you know, Rune and then enable AirPlay because that's the only thing that's running at the time. The payout or the benefit of that is that everything in the pie and everything in the red is like optimized for that service. And there is a little bit of a bump in quality when you do that, because all the services, like it just kind of gets rid of all the extra stuff that runs that doesn't need to run and everything can run as efficiently and as clean as possible. So I just wanted to, and we'll go over and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but basically um, if you look at, the software, the difference between compatibility mode and performance mode is instead of checkboxes that we can check everything in performance mode, we only get a radio button to enable one at a time. Okay. So let's just stay in compatibility mode for now. so I'm going to go through options. Like say I want to do rune ready. Well, once I've, even if I go down here and I save it, okay. And it's going to go ahead and save. Um, I haven't selected an output. There's no, there's no output that is selected. So I have this red native output. Now the red native output is basically all those digital connections on the back, the optical, the SPDIF, the AES, the I2S, those, that is the red native output. Now the USB output is not. So that's not part of the red native output because essentially that is another USB output. So if I actually plugged in a USB cable to another DAC, then that would show up on the red OS. Okay. And I'll do that in just a second. I'll plug in a DAC and you can see that. Um, but for now, let's just stick with, um, the red native output. So once I do that, the options that were grayed out here, as far as my volume control and DSD mode show up for volume control, I either get none hardware or software. If you're just connecting to a regular DAC, just leave it at none. If you want to be able to control the software, like through Rune, like say I want to be able to, you know, max everything out and then, but I want to control the volume through uh, Rune, then you can set, you know, software as my volume control because of whatever, you know, volume I want in Rune, that's what the volume I want. I usually want like, you know, the red not to do anything with the audio, like bit perfect from what's there delivered to my DAC. And so I select software. I really don't even know hardware, like how to configure the hardware output. So I, that I have no idea. Um, the DSD mode we do have, I don't have a DSD DAC, but this is, you know, basically you're choosing how to, you know, how it's going to handle a DSD stream, whether it's going to convert to PCM, uh, DOP, uh, whether it's just going to send it straight on through as native, um, the uh, like all those bits, or you're going to do DCS. So everybody that has a DSD, like you should be very aware of what all those uh, the terminology means. Um, mostly what I know is, is native, which is just like, I'm not going to touch the stream or PCM where it's going to down convert it. Um, but that is basically the options. Now, once we've got that saved, I can go down here again and I can save it. And then, so once it's saved, then now I'm in compatibility mode. I've got rune and you know, I'm configured. If I went to rune, it would now find my rune ready endpoint, uh, as the hollow audio red. Okay. Um, and it's going to be the same for all these things. So we'll just go, I'm just going to scroll down and show you all the, the devices. The HQ player is the only one that doesn't really give us any options. We just get a check on or off, uh, the UP and piece, we get the same options as before the airplay. Once again, no really options except for choosing our red native output. Okay. Squeeze light. 
same options, but all we get is PCM. We don't get a uh, like a, a hardware controlled like volume control, so that's not even uh, an option in for Squeeze Light. Scream, same thing as some of the others. Like we just get with no DSD or like volume control, just like what output that we want to use. However, we do get a warning that Scream exclusively occupies the output service, so other services can't use this output device and will be deselected. So if you use Scream, you might want to use um, like the performance mode. And then Spotify Connect. Uh, once again, just the output and Tidal Connect, we just get the output. So really the only one that gives us uh, like the, all of the options are UPnP and the Rune Ready, which Rune Ready kind of operates the same way as I like, kind of like uh, UPnP. Anyway, so uh, we're just going to go with that and save. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to plug in. Uh, I'm going to pause the video for just a second. And I am going to plug in my uh, my DAC so you can see. I'm going to plug in my shit. Uh, Idrasil, if I say that correctly. Um, so pardon me. But yeah, let me plug it in so you can see what that looks like. All right. So now that I have plugged in my Idrasil and I have uh, refreshed the browser, you can see now that I have another output here. So I have a, you know, red native output. And then that now I also have a USB output. I have the USB output options. And yes, I can select them as like both. Uh, I can, however, uh, some of them, some of the services, I cannot select as both. Um, and I think even Rune, even if you have them both selected, I think you both, I think they show up in Rune where you have to, uh, choose what you, you know, where the output is going. Um, but yes, you cannot, like a lot of times can't have them on simultaneously. It is this radio button where you have to choose like where you want the output. What do you want the USB to go to the native output, which is once again, all of the services like the, uh, the AES, the, or excuse me, all of the digital outputs, SPDIF, optical, uh, AES, I2S, all of that kind of stuff. Or are we going to the the output here? Um, so, yeah, say I want to do that. I want to send it to my DAC. I can do that. And then I'm just going to show you performance mode right quick because this is pretty much it. I mean, this is pretty much all of the, the options. This is the Red OS. I mean, this is uh, how easy it is to control because everything else... You know, you control through other things like you PNP. There's several options like for a foobar or for uh, like other stuff that give you you PNP um, outputs. Um, same thing with airplay. But yeah, it is a radio button. So like once you choose, like if I'm in performance mode and I say, OK, I'm in room ready and it's going the red native output and I'm going to save it. OK, so everything is saved. I'm using performance mode. I'm getting the best audio quality whatsoever out of this, but say now I want to use AirPlay. If I go to AirPlay, nothing's going to show up until I go back into here, enable AirPlay now, and then I still have to choose an output and then, then I save. And then once I save, I, I put it in there. Now it also gives you one other thing I wanted to say is that it also gives you the reboot option. I've never really had to like reboot unless I've had some like issues um with everything so i mean i you know um usually i'm just saving but sometimes if you want to reboot you can this os is pretty simple there's nothing really you know much going on and then yeah this usb director oh the usb redirector it is used to configure what the usb input does when the red is used as a ddc meaning like when it's uh, you plug in the USB from your computer and um, you uh, it's basically like it, you it will act as a USB decrapifier, if you will. So like you would plug in uh, your USB from your computer and plug it into this device. And then you would you would then plug in like your DAC to the USB output and it would it would then. Uh, you know, when, when you turn on your red and it would, you know, sense the USB, it wouldn't boot the Pi, but basically it would read this option 
and it would like be used as a USB reclocker or filter to the output. So then, um, because basically, you know, when you plug in the USB, uh, like from your computer, you would get automatically all of the outputs like the i2s and the spdif and the aes the redirector would then redirect the usb input to the usb output so hopefully that makes sense for that and if you use other software if you use like volumio or you know uh, mood or any other you would lose the option for this you can only really get this option if you use red os so that's not even in the manual let me look at the look at the value uh sorry to, <laughs> to do my own horn but yeah i had to i had to look that up for a second and realize like what that was because i didn't even know what it was uh, but i just kind of found out myself so hopefully that helps everybody like get started and help you like use hollow audio red and use the device because i think that uh i think it sounds great I, like I said, I do think even though that it's kind of a burden to kind of go into and switch uh, like in the performance mode, I think the performance mode is kind of one of the better options to use rather than the, uh, the other option of just using everything and leaving everything empty all at once. Because um, I have noticed a difference even when Gen 2 Player. Gen 2 Player has a similar option like that way where you can only where you load what you want and you can load all these other options, but I think it always works better when you, you know, you just load what you need and just go with that. So hopefully on my next video, I'm going to be covering, uh, the, you know, uh, covering Gen 2 player, covering Toretta. And that's it's like, it's weird and complicated. However, you can like use Gen 2 player for free and you can use Toretta for free you will just be limited to 1644.1, meaning 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz files. Uh, so, but to do high res and really enjoy high res, uh, and if you use QO Buzz like me, uh, and, you know, th then you know you really like high res, and uh, you really kind of miss it. And so, but once you hear the difference, I think that it's, uh, I think it's worthwhile. And you can try Gen 2 Player, like I said, on any PyBase streamer, um, but still the hollow audio red you know i guess it's the first thing i tried it works works so great so anyway uh hopefully everybody enjoyed that uh and i've got some more videos coming i still got my you know passive preamp uh that i need to show the internals and show the build out of that that is coming and um so look for more stuff thanks for everybody for subscribing really do appreciate it and we'll talk to you guys later bye